All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for our town hall, Alexa Workshin Hurt, Combating Amazon's Warehouse Injury Epidemic in California. And by us, I mean this coalition of the Democratic Socialists of America, Los Angeles, Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy, the Los Angeles Labor Federation, Partnership for Working Families, Teamsters 396, the Warehouse Workers Resource Center, and Courage California. And good evening, everyone. I'm Irene Gao, the Executive Director of Courage California. Um, before we get started, I'd like to do a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge our presence on the traditional and unceded territory of hundreds of First Nations who are the traditional caretakers of this land we call California. As visitors on this land, we pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, relatives, and future generations. Um, and just to let folks know, there is a conference line for Spanish speaking audiences. Uh, the dial-in number is 605-313-4441. And the access code is 696424. And we'll include that information as well for you to be able to, to call in. Also quickly, a disclaimer. Uh, we wanna make sure that our viewing audience is aware that the Facebook Live is public and anyone can view it by going to our Facebook pages. To all current warehouse workers joining us today in the audience, please be aware that typing in the chat box or reacting to this Facebook Live reveals your attendance to anyone watching this information session. If you want to stay anonymous, please do not comment in the chat box or react to this video. If you have questions, please send us your questions via direct message to our Warehouse Worker Resource Center Facebook page, and we'll address your questions in the Q&A section. And if you're okay with being public, uh, you can comment and submit your questions anytime via the Facebook comments on the Facebook page that you're joining from this evening. Uh, last thing, we also ask that you help us spread the word by using the hashtag work shouldn't hurt no apostrophe. In recent years, Amazon Prime Day has become the largest online shopping event in history, surpassing both Black Friday and Cyber Monday. For many Amazon Prime members, Prime Day is the starting point of holiday shopping and shopping for cheaper prices. But what happens after consumers place their orders on Amazon? Behind the scenes are thousands of exhausted workers who are forced to work extra time on top of their 12 hour shifts and 60 hour work weeks to meet Prime Day demand. Many of these workers are temporary hire, temporarily hired through subcontracting agencies to work on Prime Day. Prime Day is also the year's most dangerous week for injuries at Amazon fulfillment centers, as workers are expected to work at a dangerous speed of work and meet abusive workloads to ensure demand during Prime Day is met. In 2019, Prime Day led to nearly 400 serious injuries among workers in Amazon fulfillment centers across the country. Last year, we saw Amazon workers forced to work through the COVID-19 pandemic, forced to place work over their health and that of their families. So today we're gonna to hear from four speakers about how Prime Day affects California workers and the general public. We'll hear from a former Amazon warehouse worker on how workers are disciplined by restrictive and punitive rate production standards that force workers to exert and strain themselves beyond what is possible or face termination. We'll hear from a research analyst from the Warehouse Worker Resource Center about the devastating injury rates and other negative impacts of Amazon's current employment model. We will then hear about what we can do to respond to this crisis at one of the largest employers in our state and similar warehouses. First, from Warrior for Working People Assemblymember Lorena Gonzalez. And we'll also hear from a worker at a warehouse who is a member of a union about what is different at his workplace. And lastly, you'll hear about how you can stand with and support California warehouse workers um, at the end, but we'll also be referring to this throughout the town hall as well. The pandemic has led companies like Amazon to handsomely profit at the cost of low wage workers well being. In October 2020, despite an ongoing pandemic, Amazon reported record sales and profits from Prime Day at the expense of workers health and safety. In the last decade, Amazon has vastly weakened labor standards and conditions for workers in the warehousing industry. On top of that, Amazon is changing our everyday lives from the way consumers shop, the growing generation of injured workers and young adults with permanent disability due to injury at Amazon, to the way our communities of working class people of color are disproportionately surrounded by warehouses and the growing illnesses due to warehouse pollution. Amazon is the only company 
but many retailers and e-commerce companies are following Amazon's model of churn and burn business at the expense of workers and communities' lives and well-being. Companies like Amazon have more than enough monetary wealth to fix workplace hazards in the workplace if they wanted to. Legislation and worker action and organizing can also force Amazon to fix workplace issues, which is why you're all here tonight. So upon the recent reopening of the state and Prime Day week, starting today, Amazon warehouse workers' health and safety are at higher stakes. So as I mentioned, today we'll be hearing from several speakers about how Amazon and other warehouse employees are affecting the health and prosperity of our state. And first, uh, we'll hear from a former Amazon warehouse worker from inland Southern California, Yesenia Barrera. Yesenia? Yes, uh, thank you, Kim. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Yesenia Barrera, and I am an organizer with the Warehouse Workers Resource Center. But before I joined Warehouse Workers Resource Center, I used to work at an Amazon warehouse in the Inland Empire, which for those who don't know, Amazon has a massive presence in the Inland Empire. Um, and they place most of the warehouses, warehousing facilities all over Southern California. You know, I was in one of those warehouses. Um, in my time there, I can tell you that I've seen and experienced firsthand how physically and mentally demanding and straining the job is. That's why this bill we're gonna be talking about, Assembly Bill 701, is important to pass. I wouldn't want any more injuries um, for any warehouse worker, especially when many of these injuries end up affecting these workers for, for the rest of their life. Not to mention the physical and mental burnout um, from the type of work that we do several hours a day. Work should not hurt us and it's time we take action on this. Workers at Amazon are getting injured at extremely high rates, and it's three times more than the average employer nationally. And this is due through to the monitoring systems that they have and the abusive worker rate, rates that makes workers work even faster to meet the rate of productivity for the day. We will always be just a number to Amazon because Amazon does not care about the working class. They do not care about their workers. You even hear Amazon call us family all the time, but we'll toss any one of us aside if we're injured or if we're not being as productive as their system wants us to be. And the work is very fast and it's harsh on the body. And as workers, we're repetitively bending, we're reaching, we're twisting, carrying and packing items that can go from 30 to 60 pounds each day for eight to 10 hours a day, you know, five days a week and even more. And this is where injuries actually start to happen. And these injuries increase during what Amazon calls their peak or prime day, which is you know, mandatory attendance and mandatory overtime. It blacks out being able to use any vacation time or requesting time off. Workers are treated poorly and feel as if there's nothing we can do. We're left with thoughts like, well, this is just the way things are because it's, it's Amazon. Wrong. You no, know, as workers, we have to meet our hourly rate and we have all these monitoring systems that keep track of all of our, our worker production. How many items can you pack per second, per, per hour? And inform our managers when we haven't moved or we're not scanning boxes for a couple of minutes. They're not exactly standing over our shoulders, but we are being watched all day by their cameras and being tracked by their monitoring systems. Anytime that you do spend not scanning an item, um, you know, it does accumulate at the end of your day and gets added to your time off task, that's what they call it which determines at the end of your shift if you'll get written up or if you'll get terminated. This is why we end up working faster most of the time, you know, to meet our rate because we don't want to be penalized and we don't want to be terminated, but it's all at the cost of our bodies. I know that every department is different and they have different rates. And in some cases, some of us don't have a rate, which leaves us working or doing as many tasks as Amazon thinks that we can handle for the shift. I know that I was a seasonal worker, but to Amazon that meant I was expandable, disposable. And I can recall one time when I was injured and I mentioned this in our last session that um, I was injured and Amazon did not care. I was scanning boxes and sliding them down the conveyor you know, for their next des destination when my scan gun did become stuck in between the boxes. Me wanting to be a good worker to keep up with the incoming boxes, hurried, rushed, and when I pulled the gun out, it struck me in the face, right in my eye. And um, 
my manager had actually come up to me after a few minutes of me not scanning and asked me why I wasn't scanning. And I informed her of the situation that just happened. Uh, my point of view was she called someone on the walkie talkie, had me replaced in the line that I was in, um, and then proceeded to walk me over to their on-site clinic. Um, but of course, before that, stopped to get me some ibuprofen in their vending machine that they have with painkillers for workers like myself. Um, at the on-site clinic, they actually gave me a paper towel and told me to run it under cold water and press it against my face. Um, not once was I asked if I was okay or if I needed a moment. They just sent me out within five minutes, right? I guess the show must go on for Amazon. And this is happening to many Amazon workers with even more serious injuries than the one I got. They're being steered back into work uh, by Amazon doctors, even when they aren't in physical condition to do so, worsening injuries for many of these workers. It's, it's very heartbreaking and it needs to stop. We show up every day to, to do our job and we can work our hardest, but we can still get fired because of our speed. I personally always felt the pressure of having to work faster to ignore my own personal needs, such as using the restroom or even getting water um, because I didn't want to get terminated. I didn't want to get written up for it. Can any of you guys imagine that? Getting terminated for wanting to comply with health and safety regulations? Simple things like using the bathroom and your time is used against you. We are not robots. We are human and we deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. Um, in my time there, I, I learned that it doesn't really matter what age you are. You can be in the best shape of your life, but we'll end up, we'll end up eventually getting hurt. I was hurt, I'm young. I'm also a mother. How would I have been able to provide for my son if my injury had been a lot more serious? I can tell you right now that Amazon would not have cared because they don't care about their employees. And as long as Amazon keeps up with these fast work speeds and abusive, abusive worker um, rate of productivity, workers are gonna continue to get hurt. Workers will continue to lose their jobs. And AB 701, will help resolve some of these problems. It will, it's gonna help workers like me and others stay safe and be able to keep their jobs, provide for our families. Amazon is always putting profits over its people and it's gone too far. Um, I do appreciate you all taking the time to come to our Facebook session. And I do encourage you to join us on our upcoming Facebook um, live sessions. We're gonna be dropping the link for our petition um, and, and I'm inviting all of you to, to sign in support of AB 701. This is a way to, to take action on these ongoing issues inside these facilities. This needs to change. We need to keep our, ourselves, our families, and our communities safe. Thank you for sharing your experience, Yesenia. I'm glad that you're now fighting on behalf of workers at the Warehouse Worker Resource Center. And, and now we're gonna hear um, about uh, some more history and context on this industry and the injury rates from Warehouse Worker Resource Center Research and Policy Coordinator Coordinator Mireya, excuse me, Mireya Denise Zarazoga. Mireya. Thank you, Irene. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Just sharing some slides um, for today's. Yes. So, like my compañera Yesenia just shared from her personal experience, the use of abusive quota systems and technology that is being used to force workers to work faster is inevitably leading to increased injuries in warehouses. Amazon is not only the largest player in warehousing with an estimate of 100,000 employees in California, but Amazon is also setting standards for technology, freight and productivity, as well as, well as profitability in warehousing and distribution centers across the country. In fact, according to recent OSHA records in 2020, Amazon workers experienced higher rates of workplace injuries compared to non-Amazon workers in the warehousing industry. On average, Amazon warehouse workers sustained more than 24,000 serious injuries, which forced workers to take time off work or be moved to light duty work. In a similar analysis, conducted by the Washington Post of injury rates. Um, they also found that injury rates 
uh, were about 5.9 serious incidents for every 100 full-time employees at Amazon warehouses. Now we compare this to 2019 where Amazon workers were injured on the job at double the average rate of the general warehousing and triple that of the private uh, warehousing industry. Injury rates in 2020 did decrease. They went down and this was because of the company suspending warnings and disciplinary action against workers for underperforming on rates and also temporarily easing some of the pressures Amazon places on workers such as time off task. And if we look in this graph that I'm showing here from the Washington Post, we can see that although in 2020 injury rates did go down, um, they did go down. However, they were almost double that of non-Amazon warehouse workers, which is extremely concerning. And if we look at 2019, it was actually more than double, right? So in 2020, there was a decrease, uh, but it's still alarming injury rates happening in warehouse, uh, warehouse distribution centers. Injury rates tend to spike during the company's biggest, uh, busiest periods, such as Prime Day, Cyber Monday, and Black Friday. In 2019, Prime Day results resulted in nearly 400 serious injuries at Amazon fulfillment centers across the country. It is important to highlight that serious injuries typically result in missing work or being transferred to lighter duties. According to the Strategic Organizing Center, an analysis of OSHA 2020 OSHA injury records, they also found that workers who experienced Serious injuries at the workplace took longer to recover compared to other non-Amazon warehouse workers. So on average in 2020, Amazon workers who experienced a severe injury were out of work for about 46.3 days, which is about a month and a half. So almost leading to two months. So now we really think, if we think about this, a lot of these workers are low wage workers, people of color who are surviving on their paychecks and being away due to an injury is devastating to not only the income, but also the entire family unit. And now turning over a bit to turnover rate at Amazon, Amazon's piece of work uh, not only leads to the debilitating injuries that we've been talking about and these unbearing uh, working conditions, but these business models burn through workers, which result in massive turnover rate. There are various factors that lead to high turnover rate at Amazon. Some of these factors include workers getting terminated for not meeting the quota or rate system, severe injury, disciplinary action from their employer, and workers leaving due to the terrible conditions at Amazon. According to an analysis from the National Employment Law Project, they found that the annual, Amazon's annual worker turnover rate was above 100% in counties in California where Amazon opened its fulfillment center. This, drastically, uh, this drastic high turnover rate has significant implications for workers because many of them are working class people of color um, and a majority of warehouse workers are Latinx with the 54% following black 9.5% and lastly Asian Americans with the 9%. So there's drastic implications for these workers. Um, this data also found that when Amazon opens their fulfillment centers to know rates drastically increase in these California industries and turnover is continuously increasing annually. So in San Bernardino County from 2012 to 2017, turnover rate doubled from 48.2% to 96.4%. In Riverside County from 2014 to 2017, the turnover rate increased from 68.4% to 106.5%, over 100%. So now if you look at these turnover rates and compare it with the overall California warehouses turnover rate and then California industry turnover rates. And, and we look at these percentages for all California warehouses, the turnover, turnover rate was 83%. And for all California industries, it was 69.8%. So both of these percentages for California are lower compared to Amazon uh, turnover rates in Amazon fulfillment centers. So this is telling us that it's, it's a major issue that needs to be addressed. And now if we move on to talking just a bit more about you know, capital and profits, Amazon um, is one of the largest players in California. They're the second largest employer in the US just behind Walmart, which is the number one employer in the US. And at the end of last year, 2020, when we were during a global pandemic and we're still in a global pandemic, where it's still not over for workers. 
who are working in warehouses. Uh, but last year in 2020, Amazon made a net profit of 21.3 billion compared to 11.6 billion in 2019. While Amazon workers were struggling to get enough personal protective equipment and supplemental paid sick leave when they got COVID-19, Amazon ended up pocketing 21.3%, which is, was the highest profits of all time in 2020. Um, also, Amazon is not only the second largest employer, they're not only profit making record profits, but they also have a vast dominance over the labor market. Amazon currently accounts for about 40% of online retail in the United States, which is which really shows how much power they have over the labor market, but also how much power they have over setting standards, working standards for warehouse workers, which is why we're here today to talk about these issues. And also now we have a real opportunity in front of us with AB 701. By fighting with this legislation, um, we can put real pressure on these companies like Amazon to change their practices and ensure that workers have better working conditions. Thank you, and I'll pass it back to Irene. Thank you, Mireya. I also want to mention here, right, there's been some news stories that have come out that have shown that not only is there high toner turnover, this is actually part of Amazon strategy. Yeah. This is how they keep renewing their workforce and keeping them at low wages um, on a permanent basis. Um, I also want to underscore what both Yesenia and Mireya were sharing in mentioning that um, here that several of our partners um, tonight on this town hall co-hosted an action in Sacramento um, in April, and they invited state legislators to work on a mock Amazon line to sort of underscore the need for more warehouse worker protections. And none of the state legislators could keep up the pace. And that was only for a few minutes um, at a time. So this is what it's like for our workers who have made our own survival possible through the pandemic. And now as Amazon grows its footprint around the state, the nation and the world. So our next speaker is a champion for workers who is taking this issue seriously in the legislature. Assemblymember Lorena Gonzalez was elected by San Diegans to the state assembly in 2013 after being a labor leader and organizer for the San Diego and Imperial Counties Labor Council, AFL-CIO. She's been a strong advocate for workers' rights, environmental justice, women's rights, and voting rights, and we're proud to fight alongside her on AB 701, a bill that will protect frontline workers frontline warehouse workers by providing them with stronger rights and protections. And you all likely know Assembly Member Gonzalez. Um, she has this wonderful habit of um, starting legislation here that then has ripple effects throughout the nation. So what we pass here in California under her, her leadership will be really important to, to make sure that we protect uh, workers around the country. So thank you, Assembly Member Gonzalez. Um, love to hear from you now. Thank you, Irene. And um, thank you, everybody who's tuning in. This is an important, important fight. We are, um, and I say it's a fight because, you know, AB 701 is important, but it, it is a first step in a long battle. We have workers in an industry that has become really one of the largest industries in the nation and definitely here in California as well. And workers who we know are put in a position where their bodies are paying for us to have fast service of goods coming to our house quickly. I'm hoping that on today's Prime Day, people are not ordering Amazon. We've heard from workers, from both warehouse workers and drivers about how their already fast pace is even compounded when there are these kinds of specials that make people feel like, oh, I've got to have it and I've got to have it now. We have to take a step back and we have to ensure that these workers are protected. What AB 701 does is it starts with that just basic health and safety, you know, the right to use the bathroom. There was a court case that found in Riverside that the warehouse was so large that it took seven minutes to walk to the bathroom. So you can imagine during your 15 minute bathroom break, if you use seven of it to walk to the bathroom and seven of it to walk back, it's highly unlikely that you can even utilize your break in, or in the time that it's allotted for you to use the restroom, basically, a normal break. People couldn't get water. They couldn't um, wash their hands appropriately during this pandemic. They definitely can't report a health and safety violation. AB 701 would get to the heart of that and start to ensure that those basic rights, basic human rights um, are respected in the workplace. It also will tell Cal OSHA, it's time to get serious about this. It's time to look at what's happening when people are managed by a robot or an algorithm, if you will. You know, one of the big problems here is that um, what, what 
not only Amazon, but Walmart and other places are now doing is having this management by algorithm, which means people have to take keep up pace and they don't even have a norm, a person to say like, hey, hold on, I've, you know, got to use the restroom. And so um, we've really got to look at this as the future, what could be Come future work. If we don't step in now and say it's time for Cal OSHA to look at this and say what is a healthy workplace, what is is a healthy work pace in order that people aren't putting themselves in danger. This is what we know. Amazon workers are three times more likely than the average worker to get hurt on the job two times more likely than even another warehouse worker to get hurt on the job. And that's not by accident. Amazon doesn't care because Amazon benefits from turning over workers in the workplace. It means it's really hard for us to go in and organize these workers. They're not even there long enough for us to have a good organizing drive. This is part of their um, ability to continue to dominate this market, to become like we saw Jeff Bezos become a billionaire over and over and over during this pandemic when our workers were dying, dying in the workplace. So it's time to stand up and know that this is a piece, but it's part of a bigger battle. And it's part of what we're gonna have to come and really show our voice on because it's what is the future of work. Everything these days, when we're looking at what could be the future of workers, it's how much control uh, uh, technology may have over your workplace and over you, and how much employers can squeeze out of you just knowing that they can they can guide you by a phone or a technological um, application to see how quick you're going to try to make you go quicker without the kind of um, recourse that we need for employees. So I'm really excited to be teaming up with the California Labor Fed and the Teamsters and the warehouse workers on this, but this is just a step forward. But we need people really engaged on this to know that it's number one, it's a step for warehouse workers, absolutely. But it's also a step forward with, with just the future of workers in general. So we're talking about warehouse workers, we're talking about delivery drivers, we're talking about, of course, app-based drivers, everybody who is controlled by these algorithms, which nowadays most, most of these types of workers are. And it's about ensuring a first step against or, or towards um, providing the best protection for Amazon workers. Every worker deserves to be safe and respective and have a voice in the workplace. And we're starting with Amazon workers this year. So thank you for allowing me to be part of this. And thank you for joining us in this important, important fight. Thank you, Assembly Member Gonzalez. Um, thank you so much for fighting for our workers. Thank you for fighting for our communities. Um, even though it seems like holding corporations, especially Amazon accountable is definitely something that's getting more and more popular and more and more people are demanding it. It is not an easy thing to do. So we especially want to thank assembly member Gonzalez because it's not easy to take on corporations um, and that's exactly what she's doing. So thank you. Um, and as a, the assembly member mentioned, if you can, we really ask you to please sign the petition um, to the Senate Labor Committee to move this important bill forward. State legislators really care about what their constituents like us think and demonstrating a large scale of support for a bill like AB 701 gives legislators more room to come out strongly in favor of policies that hold corporations accountable. I also wanna to say too, not all warehouse jobs are bad jobs. The difference is when workers organize and hold their employer accountable for working conditions. We can see workers who can last years or decades and build strong economic situations. So our next speaker is gonna speak a little bit more to this to contrast to sort of what's happening within Amazon. So I'd like to introduce Alexander Fairweather, UPS worker and Teamster. Alexander? Oh, Alexander, you're still on mute, I believe. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay, there we go, there we go. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alexander Fairweather, and I am a UPS worker. I work out of the Compton Hub, um, and um, I have a union. And uh, safety is a big, a big, big, um, a big, problem when it comes down to a, my job um had an issue with one guy uh had a whole bunch of stuff inside of it was a buildup of we have a belt a whole bunch of stuff that comes off of the belt maybe a box may open up uh and so they have a lot of stuff that may fall over into a little big old uh cage the cage is latched up but then over time, when the maintenance doesn't come in, look over the cage and make sure that it's not 
uh, filling up or just make sure that it's clean. The, it gets so full that the latch just opens up and it causes a, a big uh, safety hazard to where stuff, big stuff, maybe small stuff may fall down on somebody's head or whatnot. Um, and we had two guys that was there just to, in the midst of that, what I was going on uh, before uh, the guy who's a package handler, uh, the problem issue happened at where his truck was. And so basically uh, he had grievanced and he's been grieving for about, I'd say, three weeks to a month. And so what happened was nobody did no action. Nothing was, you know, took place uh, to, you know, get that issue situated. So he went to his union. Uh, when he went to his union, uh, they went ahead and investigated and found out what was going on and made sure that that was taken care of to where that way it wouldn't cause a whole safety hazard. Uh, we do have, um, at my job, we do have, um, where we can not work uh, because it's, it's unsafe. Um, and with that being said, maybe you may have a, a box, maybe you may have three different trucks and you may have to get all everything inside of those trucks and we have these lights that go on. And so um, some, uh, some of the stuff that comes down may be, uh, how would I say, uh, have paint, uh, different uh, chemical spills and stuff like that. That's that comes down off of the shoe just because of contact of maybe it hit the wall on the belt as it's coming down the belt and it maybe it opened up or whatnot. And so now we have um, just by the contract and us being uh, having a union or whatnot, uh, it states whether uh, you know we're not allowed to work because of the unsafe hazardous um, environment or whatnot and. Um, it's a big it, having uh, safety is a big thing, and I think that it should be. I think that the main reason why we don't have that many injuries or that many, how would I say, um, uh, problems pertaining to safety is because we follow guidelines and we follow our safety rules, uh, the policies, and I think that all labor union jobs, you know, should definitely follow and definitely Amazon because just the way how they treat their workers and definitely from what I'm hearing, how they treat their workers. Um, I definitely joined this fight because of the simple fact of, you know, uh, I have a family and I know other people have families. And I know the big thing is to make sure that their family's taken care of and they're good. How do you expect your worker to, how would I say, work for you in a safe environment and, 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 and just be safe when, you know, you have all these different, uh, uh, injuries and stuff that go on. So I definitely feel that safety is a big issue that should be talked about in uh, labor jobs or anything down in trucking or anything that's pertaining to warehouse or labor in, in, in general. So that's how I feel about the whole situation. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you for sharing your experience. Um, it's heartening to know that there are other models, alternative models out there to Amazon um, that have more humane and just workplaces. Um, and again, like your story is just a good reminder of why it's so important uh, for corporations, like the people up at the top making these decisions to make sure that the these conditions are are better for their workers in the first place. Um, so, so thank you, and thank you to the the other speakers as well. So now you've heard from all the speakers, and we want to be able to open it up um, to to answer some questions that that you have. Um, so we received a few uh, while we we're presenting, and I want to encourage you and remind you to please also keep asking questions in the comment section in the Facebook pages that you're joining from um, tonight. Uh, so the first question, I see Alexander going off camera for one quick second. Um, so we did have a, oh, hello, Alexander. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so the, I have a question for you. So Companies like Amazon claim that they need rigid production quotas and rates in order to be competitive. How does this work at UPS and how do they stay competitive and still keep workers safe? Say that one last time. Of course. So um, you know, companies like Amazon claim that they need rigid production quotas and rates in order to be competitive. So how does this work at UPS, um, especially how do they stay competitive and still keep workers safe? Um, the best way I can tell you that is uh, they do the, they, they 
how it works, how to stay competitive, um, I would say, because we, we, we bring out a lot of boxes per minute. Um, I forgot exactly how much it is, but if they want you to move so fast um, and pertaining to the red lights, uh, the competitive being, it's very, they, they work you, they work you, they, 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 um, they, they try to push you and tell you move fast, but we don't move fast because of the main thing is safety is a big issue and they don't want, how would I say, um, you to get hurt, but also they want you to move fast so that way they can get their stuff out, uh, pertaining towards getting towards the customers that we, you know, that we actually, um, get the packages out to. Um, but how I think they really truly stay competitive is you know, I think it's just really with the the urgency of just getting everything out and how to get it out. That that's that's uh that's what we have to say. Thank you, Alexander. Um so yeah. it sounds like there is that push, you do have that urgency, but at the same time there are protections in place put for you. And again, like that work, that work culture of your safety is also set from the top. So you know that that's sort of the balance that you have to strike. Right. Thank you. Um, so the next question I have is for Mireya. Um, so somebody asked, so today was really hot in the Inland Empire. So how does this heat affect workers? Um, and are there any protections for these high temperatures? Yeah, thank you, Irene. Um, so yes, in warehouses, workers are typically um, rushing throughout the entire warehouse. These warehouses can be more than uh, 1 million square foot in, in, in length. So workers are constantly, you know, walking throughout the warehouse. A lot of workers have reported running at some points to be able to meet their quotas. Um, we've heard from workers that they can either walk from between five miles to 10 miles a day. And all of that is intense exercising. You can, you can, it's intense exercising and workers are constantly being, are constantly moving and that intense movement creates a lot of heat and there's issues within these warehouses. There's not enough ventilations, ventilation systems. Workers are um, constantly, um, you know, because it's, there's not good ventilation systems, it gets really hot. Some workers end up dehydrating because it's really hot in these warehouses. Um, and these are real issues that, you know, we're struggling with. Um, but something that's very important that we were able to, to achieve in 2016 was that Warehouse Workers Resource Center, we work with uh, Senator Connie Leva to uh, address heat issues in warehouses. And we did pass the first indoor heat standard to protect workers from these, um, from these heat situations. Um, so there is protection, but it's still an ongoing issue. And it's something that hasn't been resolved um, because there's still workers who are getting dehydrated in the workplace. And because it's so intense, and it, it, it's an intense workplace, it's a fast pace and workers are exercising the entire day. Um, we have workers who are not drinking enough water because they're working really fast to make that rate or to meet their quota. They're not drinking enough water and that's also leading them to dehydrate. So if we had more control, if, we have, if workers have more control over their quotas, they would be able to take those breaks and drink water and reduce, be able to hydrate and reduce having, um, a, experiencing dehydration in the workplace. Uh, but yes, definitely there's, it's really hot today. It, we have a lot of hot days coming, you know, in the Inland Empire this summer. So thank you for raising that question in the audience because it's something, it's a real issue. We're still fighting, you know, to address this issue, but there's some protection with the, our 2016 um, pass, uh, successful pass for the first indoor heat. Thank you, Mireya. Yeah, I remember when that story broke of, uh, particularly hot day and warehouse workers had to be taken away by ambulance, but they were so afraid of just 
again, like being terminated, I um, mean, they can take care of themselves. So this is a great lead into the next question then for Yesenia. So you talked about work at an Amazon warehouse being really dangerous and intense. Um, and definitely we're hearing that more from the other speakers as well. So if you had a magic wand, what would you do to make Amazon warehouses safer? Yeah, of course. Um, thank you, Kim. Um, I, if I had a magic wand, I think the first thing would do to set a doable standard uh, for rate because workers have all types of different rates. And like, um, like Mireya had stated previously, many of us walk five to 10 miles and even more a day, even if we're in the same place. Um, rate is a, you know, rate is also the reason why many workers get let go of because they're not as fast as, you know, the Amazon productivity systems want, want you to be. Definitely rate is, a, uh, rate is an issue. They're all different types of rates set differently for every department. And I would definitely um, focus more on the time off task as well. Like, as I mentioned before, you know, many of us ignore our own personal needs to not accumulate this time off task. And where, 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 how would they track time off tasks correctly? You know, most of us get water. We're working at a fast, repetitive pace. We want to get water. We want to use the restroom. And, you know, as Lorena had mentioned, our nearest restrooms are a five to seven minute walk where, where you know, any of that time is still accumulated and used against us. Um, I would say that changing, changing how they, um, well, changing or removing the time off task completely um, cause as I'm hearing from Alex, um, you know, they they are still able to get out all of their orders throughout the day, um, you know, without putting their health and safety at risk because health and safety should be first. And the way Amazon has it set up is not that way. It's keep going, keep going, keep going, or you will be written up or you will be terminated. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. Thank you, Senia. Um, so another question that's come up, uh, of course, Assembly Bill 701 has made the, the California Chamber of Commerce puts together a set of bills that they consider job killer bills, right? So bills that they're claiming that because um, we're trying to expand worker protections, um, you know, expand sick leave or, or make it easier for workers to care for themselves and their families, they claim that this will instead like, you know, cut into their business and their profits. Um, so I'd love to hear, um, Yesenia, maybe starting with you, like, how do you respond uh, when you see something like this? When people say of like, oh, if businesses and corporations like Amazon um, have to like protect their workers, um, invest more in their workers like that, that that's actually gonna like kill the, their, their corporation or the industry. How do you sort of respond to that? Cut them for who? The, the workers, you know, um, I don't think it would be cutting into their profits, you know, in this, in, well, in the sense that to them, they're making the profits, right? But many of the workers are kind of facing the consequences. I, I don't think that having a new type of, you know, or, or regulating the way that they're, they're making the rate, I don't think it would impact them greatly. After all, you know, right now, they're, they're one of the biggest corporations right now. Um, and they can clearly, you know, afford to, 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 to cut it down on the way that they're making workers work, right? The pace of work, um, they don't have to be working as fast as they do. And many of these workers are facing consequences such as losing their job and, you know, it's affecting their livelihood and even getting injured, you know, to make profits for, for, for these big corporations such as Amazon. I don't think that they should lead with their profits. They should lead with the health and safety of all workers, all of their workers. Because the, the average Amazon worker is not there for more than six months and because of their high turnover. Thank you, Senia. And for me, this brings back to sort of what Assembly Member Gonzalez was saying, right? This is less about um, individual workers necessarily at one corporation. This is also about the future of work and the future of what we want for our economy. And so Amazon setting this model is just a really dangerous, um, precedent, but it's also, you know, not too different. I remember when like Walmart was in the news for their worker abuses and things like that. So this is a cycle that we totally have within our power to break. Um, Alexander, I'm really curious, um, you spoke about this a little bit, um, 
a few of the folks who have been joining us on Facebook Live have really been talking about how, um, you know, this turnover and that has to be contributing to like people not feeling great at work, having really low morale, um, but having to just churn things out. Um, so I'm really curious to hear from you, like in terms of your experience at UPS, knowing that you have that sort of um, worker protections from the corporate level, but also that you have a union backing you, like what is the workplace culture like? And do you, how do you see that contrasting with what sort of people are experiencing at Amazon? Um, with that, um, okay, there's a lot of, um, so with them working you very hard, um, they can be very, the supervisors can be very uh, manipulative, uh, how would I say, uh, and what way of that, um, like they would, they would try to like vacation time and, and uh, just, they throw you in there. When they throw you inside and when you first start working, they throw you in there, not knowing any kind of information about safety, about nothing towards the job. And so with that being said, you just got to go around and talk to different employees and try to figure out what's going on and try to figure out where's my place at now in the sense of what do I need to do in order for me to be welcomed in that way, in a sense like that. Um, pertaining to uh, safety wise, uh, uh, well, pertaining to just anyway, just experience um, with, um, they have a lot of people that like to care for their own inside of the job workplace. And so when they care for themselves, um, it show it puts on a lot of, uh, it throws off a, a lot of negative uh, negativity towards other people at the job, which they, they want to help you. Um, um, and it's just, people just don't care no more. Um, and with that being said, I think if you had more people who cared more about safety, just cared in just general, uh, you would have more people in this fight too as well that can make this more better and understanding to where people can understand that it's, it's not just about me, us, you know, in this meeting, it's all about all of us, you know what I mean? And um, it's, a, it's, 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 I see that in, all aspects of work fields, you know what I mean? And so that's, I think if we had more people who actually cared and show just a little bit of a little care, I think it would give it more of a push to be able for other people to really show, okay, I see what the fight is. I see what we're trying to do. Um, and I see what Amazon is not trying to do. Um, and so, um, yeah, with that, you know, I think, um, I think, uh, that's how, that's what I, I feel about that. I definitely feel about that. Thank you, Alexander. What you said remind me of how, right? Like we've heard insider stories about how people can't even talk to each other just because they don't have the time to. So, right, like that limits it. And then on top of that, if you're working these 12 hour work shifts and 60 hour work weeks, like I can't even imagine like then on top of that, trying to unionize and organize. So. I echo what you're saying is now we have like a moment like this where we have an assembly bill um, that right, offers some right. of those protections, gives people a little bit more room, a little bit more support, and we need to show the ways that we can take care of each other, right? Like, right. I think Maria, as you were mentioning before, right? Like these are workers who have been taking care of us. Yesenia, you've been mentioning this too. Like these warehouse workers have been taking care of us. Like I remember when Courage, when we put out some calls about trying to hold Amazon accountable, we heard a lot of personal stories from people who really depended on the deliveries to get them through the pandemic. Um, and so now it's really time for us as the people who have benefited from their work and their labor to turn around and to be able to support this. So I wanna, again, like shout out folks of like, again, this assembly bill is just, as assembly member Gonzalez mentioned, is just the starting point for what we can do for warehouse workers in Amazon, but um, in the state and nationwide, but it's a really important one. It's something, it's a way that we can show care and, and take some action today. So I think that was it for the questions that we have for tonight. Um, so I wanna quickly close out first. Um, yes, uh, wanna mention again, like if you wanna take action on this assembly bill, um, 
there's a couple of steps that you can take. And one especially would be to um, sign this petition to get the Assembly Bill 701 passed. Again, like as Assembly Member Gonzalez um, mentioned, it already passed um, in the State Assembly. So now it really get, needs to get through the, the Senate. And then once it gets through the Senate, it makes it to Governor Gavin and Newsom's desk. So the more we can keep up pressure at these different points to move it further, the more support you know, the senators and the governor know that we have for this bill, and then the greater likelihood we'll get it signed into law here. Um, and as some of you may know, Assemblymember Gonzalez has written legislation like this before, addressing work and labor rights. Um, and what has happened in California has been a model for other states as well. So if we get this passed, this then becomes hopefully a ripple effect um, around the country. So with that, I just wanna close by saying, um, Amazon's impacts on the communities of our state is just completely unacceptable. You've heard so many different stories throughout tonight. I'm hearing you've been reading about them in the news. And in a growing economy like that of California, it's just like it's unbelievable and just wrong that workers are getting injured and even losing their lives in the workplace. And all this just so they could bring food to their own tables and all while employers like Amazon are making record profits on the backs of our communities. So we're calling upon our California legislators and urging you to do better for warehouse workers who have kept the state going during a global pandemic. California can do better for workers. And the only way we can make this happen is, is is if each of us is stepping up to take action. So first, if you haven't signed the petition yet, don't wait any longer, sign it tonight. Um, you'll see it in the Facebook feeds here. Um, another way that you can get involved, um, make calls to legislators. So right now the bill is being negotiated in the Senate Labor Committee. So we want the legislators in that committee and our senators in general to hear our voices. So sign up to make this call this week and our organizers will help prepare you and patch you through to those legislators. Second, get others to sign the petition and come to our next information session. Our strength is our numbers, so help spread the word to friends, families, and coworkers. Third, tell your story. So sign up to work with our communications team. We want to tell the story of what warehouse, warehouse workers are facing, right? We're seeing these, these stories happening in the news, but as you heard from Lysenia, right? It's different when you hear it directly from the people who are experiencing this. So we're posting the sign up uh, form in the chat bar. So sign up to get involved. And lastly, of course, help us spread the word by using the hashtag worker, work shouldn't hurt no apostrophe. So with that, with those action um, steps, I hope you guys can take at least uh, one tonight, sign the petition, and then second, sign up for the sign up form to, to take action in the other ways as well. Um, and then lastly, I also want to mention to follow um, all of these partners here, especially the Warehouse Workers uh, Resource Center, LA Labor Fed. These are the partners who are making these working conditions better and helping to organize the workers in the warehouses directly. Um, so on behalf of Courage California and all of our partners tonight, I'd like to thank all of our speakers, um, Yesenia Barrera, um, Mireya Denise Zerozoka, Assemblymember Lorena Gonzalez, and Alexander Fairweather. I also Thanks. want to thank, of course, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Alexander. Unions, they work and they're good for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I also want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, let's go fight the Amazon power. All right. Have a good night, everyone. All right, have a good night. Thank you, everyone. And we're off. We're off. Great job, um, everyone. You guys did amazing. Hey. Nervous. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring everyone back onto panelists so you all can join back. And in my bed, I didn't mean to get up. It was so hot. I had I didn't think to turn on my fan. <laughs> I was like, man. <laughs> no worries. I mean, I didn't mean to like live commentate. And there he goes. And he's back. And that's <laughs> right. But it worked out. It worked out. And I hope you're staying cool too the whole time. Thank you. I was. I was. I had to get close to my windows a little bit too. <laughs> No, I like this though. I like this fight, you know, and uh, you know, we gotta keep having this. We gotta keep going with this. Stay strong with it. Positivity. Um, you guys are all panelists now, so you should be able to unmute yourselves and turn on your cameras if you want. <laughs> All 
I don't want to turn on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say great job, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm curious of what your guys' numbers look like on your late your Facebook live feeds. Uh, on Courage's side, I think uh, we had about 60 on and off. So I'm curious to see what other people had. I saw 60 on the Feds account, although I kind of wonder if would, is it possible that the same number was showing on all the accounts? I think so. That's yeah, the number I, I saw. It's like yeah. 58 or 62 or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Scarlett is on here. I don't see her. Are we going to boost this? Or I see an LA Fed, two of them. Oh, uh, it, it's already or it was boosting during when we were uh, we had it on. Awesome. So hopefully some folks uh, were got here through the boost, but it's going to be boosted for the next few days. Perfect, thank you. And I think it's calculating the insights from the um, the live itself. So I'll let you all know uh, what it says when the um, the numbers come back. But I think yeah. I, from what I could see, it was a solid 60 people um, throughout the whole event. You know, I'm sure um, there were people coming in and out as they were using Facebook or seeing the boost or uh, seeing the notifications on their phone. But uh, so that's a really good number to have. Um, but we'll be able to see when it processes how many people total um, were on and watching the live at some point in the um, during the segments. <laughs> the chat. They're in the spirit. <laughs> the Teamster chat was the most lively I saw. <laughs> What were some of the reactions or what were some of the comments? I saw a couple of them got chatted here in the panelist link, but I'm also just curious to hear what folks were responding to. Um, someone wrote, I think it was Estuardo, it, um, the assembly people would have gotten fired if they really worked at Amazon when you were talking about them not meeting rate. Um, I did see boycott them in one I saw um, some of the teamsters were like, we they should unionize <laughs> for some of the comments. I'm trying to remember the other ones. Do you remember any, Claudia? Hey. Um, I, I put the ones in the chat from ours, but I'm looking at the teamster one. And yeah, somebody is just kind of reaffirming what Alexander was saying is that like the only time you can stop work is if it's a safety issue, right? And so that's what they're able to do. All right, any final thoughts or responses or are there um, follow-ups that we need to take care of after this? I know on the career side, we'll, we'll likely share the recording of the um, session once it's available to our members too. Yeah, and uh, Scarlett, how many people, I, I know we had a number before the event, so I wanted to, but I wanted to know how many people signed the petition since it really was for this event and it was placed during the event? Oh yeah, yeah. I can check it again now that we um, had it in the in the segment. Let me bring it up. This is about the.
Well, um, Claudia is looking for the number. Are folks also planning on continuing, I assume, like pushing out the petition, that sort of thing? Okay. From WWRC side, we'll continue to push the petition. And also, we will be posting on Facebook when our next session will be. I, it totally blew my mind to, to mention the, the, our next Facebook Live, which will be July 8th at 4 p.m. For, for an English version. And then we're having another um, uh, Facebook Live on July 12th, which would be a Spanish, Spanish one. So we will be uh, posting on Facebook just to let folks know when our next Facebook Live will be. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you all can see my screen, but it looks like so far 285 signatures. That's pretty awesome. That's 285 more than we had before. Well, when, when did we launch it? We're making some noise. We're making some noise. Bad. I think we launched it Thursday. Yeah, I think we launched it Thursday. Good. If we can get to a thousand by July fifth, which is our new date to, for the Senate Labor Committee, we got moved from the twentieth to the fifth. That's pretty big, folks. If we can physically print a thousand um, signatures and lay it on Cortese's desk, we're gonna all forward uh, everyone to that petition, correct? If Just we could, even if I think even before when Courage had their own, we we sent it over. Okay. Yeah, but if we could streamline it, that'd be good. And then we figure out how to give the data on the back end, Chris. Yeah, we have it. We we, uh, we we set it up so that people could check what organization they wanted updates from, so we can get that all together. I don't know if we want to do that now or uh, when you would want that, but we could totally do that for everybody. Awesome. Let's start doing that. I think once it gets to uh, kind of. Uh, maybe a little bit larger number, like in the three, four hundreds, we can put like the thermometer thing on. Yeah, but I suggest keep going to the same link. Uh, that way it's all in one place. And then we'll print it out. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll send out the, the data to everyone. Okay, sounds good. I mean, Amazon petitions have done really well for Kurt. So I'm hoping we can drive at least a couple thousand people. Um, to sign this one. So cheers. Thank you, everyone. The, um, can we update the petition language? Don't worry, y'all. We're going to get it. Just stay positive. I'm going to stay positive with y'all, with each other. We're going to do it. We're going to get it. Trust me. That's right. Thank you, Alexander. I, I think I heard Angela, were you trying to update the petition language? Yeah, if we can just update it so that people know they're not registering for like a Facebook Live anymore. Ah, good catch. Scarlett, can we take care of that? Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be that. Um, I changed that before that it started. It just link at the top. It says like, join us right now on Facebook Live, but it's just a petition only. All right, everybody. I think we, we did it. Thank you. We'll keep updated on how our numbers uh, project online and then we'll have a plan for delivering the petitions. Yay, thank you guys. This was great. I really appreciate everybody just coming through and stepping up. You guys did fantastic work, so I appreciate it. Thanks everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. Stay cool.